Paula Weinstein, a pioneering film producer and former chief content officer at Tribeca Enterprises, passed away at 78 in New York. Celebrated for producing notable films such as The Perfect Storm and Blood Diamond, Weinstein's illustrious career was also marked by her dedication to social justice and empowering women in Hollywood. According to her daughter, Hannah Rosenberg, Weinstein was a masterful producer and a tireless advocate for the stories she believed in. Weinstein's impact extended beyond film production to her leadership roles at Tribeca, where she championed underrepresented filmmakers and contributed to the Tribeca Talk series. Her commitment to political causes was evident in her departure from Tribeca Enterprises in 2023 to focus on activism. Through Spring Creek Prods, which she co-founded, Weinstein produced a wide array of successful films. Her efforts to break barriers and promote social justice were recognized with multiple awards, including two Primetime Emmys and two Crystal Awards from Women in Film. Weinstein's legacy is a testament to her profound influence on the film industry and her unwavering commitment to advocacy. She is survived by her daughter, Hannah Rosenberg, and leaves behind a legacy of groundbreaking cinema and steadfast dedication to equality and democracy. Ron Harper, a veteran actor whose career spanned over five decades, with memorable roles in TV classics such as Planet of the Apes and Land of the Lost, passed away at 91 due to natural causes at his home in West Hills. Harper's journey through the entertainment industry was marked by his versatility and resilience, characteristics that endeared him to generations of viewers. Born on January 12, 1933, in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania, Harper's passion for acting took him from the stages of Princeton University, where he was deeply involved in summer stock, to the esteemed classrooms of the Lee Strasberg Theater and Film Institute. Despite being offered a fellowship to Harvard Law School, Harper chose to pursue his dream of acting, a decision that led him to understudy for Paul Newman in Tennessee Williams' Sweet Bird of Youth on Broadway. Harper's television career was prolific, starring in several short-lived yet impactful series. He made his mark as Date Burt Kling in 87th Precinct, Jeff Conway in Wendy and Me, and further showcased his talents in The Gene Arthur Show and Garrison's Gorillas. Despite these series not extending beyond their first seasons, Harper's dedication to his craft was unwavering. His role as astronaut Alan Verdon in Planet of the Apes television series and Uncle Jack in the third season of Land of the Lost are among his most celebrated works. Harper's ability to bring depth to his characters, whether in a science fiction setting or a classic cop drama, showcased his adaptability and skill. Beyond the small screen, Harper's contributions to the stage and soap operas alongside appearances in films like Pearl Harbor and The Odd Couple 2, highlighted a career filled with diverse roles and memorable performances. Survived by his daughter Nicole, son-in-law Daniel, granddaughters Ronnie and Harper, and his ex-wife Shirley, Harper's legacy in the entertainment industry is a testament to his talent, perseverance, and the profound impact he had on audiences worldwide. M. Emmett Walsh, a venerable character actor whose expansive career spanned over seven decades and included roles in more than 200 films and television series, has passed away at the age of 88 due to cardiac arrest. Walsh died on March 19 at Northwestern Medical Center in St. Albans, Vermont, leaving behind a legacy that will forever be remembered in the annals of Hollywood history. Born in Ogdensburg, New York, and raised in rural Swanton, Vermont. Walsh's early life was marked by a significant challenge. He underwent a mastoid operation at age three, which left him deaf in his left ear. Despite this, Walsh pursued his passion for acting, eventually graduating from Clarkson University before moving to New York City to study at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Walsh was known for his unique ability to play villains who were blissfully unaware of their villainy bringing a delightfully menacing presence to his roles. Some of his most memorable performances include Earl Frank in Straight Time, The Madman in The Jerk, Captain Bryant in Blade Runner, and as the private detective Lauren Visser in Blood Simple. 
the latter earning him the Independent Spirit Award for Best Male Lead. His filmography is a testament to his versatility and dedication to the craft, with notable appearances in Midnight Cowboy, Little Big Man, Serpico, Slapshot, Ordinary People, Raising Arizona, The Iron Giant, and Knives Out, among many others. Beyond his film roles, Walsh made significant contributions to television and theater, showcasing his broad talent and earning the respect and admiration of peers and audiences alike. In 2018, he was inducted into the Character Actor Hall of Fame, a fitting recognition for his remarkable career. Walsh's departure marks the end of an era for character acting in Hollywood. His work ethic, generosity, and iconic roles have left an indelible mark on the film industry. As we remember Walsh for his contributions to cinema, his legacy as a beloved character actor and a working actor who brought his best to every role will undoubtedly endure. Bill Jorgensen, a trailblazer in television news and a familiar face to New York City viewers, has passed away at the age of 96 in Franklin, North Carolina on March 13, 2024. Jorgensen, born in Park Ridge, Illinois, is celebrated for his pioneering role as the founding anchor of WNEW-TV's 10 o'clock news from its inception in 1967 until 1979, before moving on to anchor at WPIX-TV until his retirement in 1987. Jorgensen's tenure at WNEW-TV marked a significant moment in broadcasting history. At the time, no other commercial television stations in New York offered a primetime newscast. His commanding presence and authoritative yet approachable delivery made the 10 o'clock news a staple for New York audiences, rapidly building a substantial viewership. Jorgensen's work ethic and dedication to journalism were evident in his insistence on being the only one to use a teleprompter, ensuring he maintained eye contact with the audience projecting confidence and reliability. After leaving WNEW, Jorgensen continued to influence the broadcasting landscape at WPIX, co-anchoring Action News and later anchoring Independent Network News. His contributions helped shape the format and presentation of local and national news on television, setting standards that influenced future generations of journalists. Beyond the camera, Jorgensen was known for his intense dedication to his craft, a trait that sometimes led to conflict with station management, but also underscored his commitment to journalistic excellence. Despite any off-camera challenges, his on-air performance was consistently brilliant, capturing the trust and respect of viewers across New York and beyond. Jorgensen's passing marks the end of an era for broadcast journalism, particularly for those who grew up watching him deliver the news with a unique blend of gravitas and warmth. As the industry reflects on his contributions, his legacy as a pioneering news anchor and a key figure in the evolution of television news will undoubtedly endure. David Seidler, an esteemed British-American playwright and screenwriter whose profound work on The King's Speech garnered both an Academy Award and a BAFTA for Best Original Screenplay, has died at the age of 86. Seidler passed away on March 16, 2024, in New Zealand, leaving behind a legacy that transcended the cinematic and theatrical worlds. Seidler's early life was marked by adversity, including a severe case of polio at the age of three, and a consequent stutter that emerged during his family's escape from the London Blitz during World War II. This personal battle with speech would later inspire the masterpiece, The King's Speech, connecting Seidler's own experiences with those of King George VI. Growing up in an upper-middle-class Jewish family, Seidler found solace and inspiration in literature and music, eventually leading him to pursue a career that melded his love for both. His journey in the arts took him from the East London Advertiser, where he began his career in journalism, to Hollywood, where he initially worked on projects like Tucker the Man in His Dream for Francis Ford Coppola. However, it was The King's Speech that truly defined his career, a project that he hesitated to pursue until receiving the go-ahead following the Queen Mother's death in 2002. The film, a heartfelt portrayal of King George VI's struggle to overcome his stammer, 
resonated with audiences worldwide, earning Seidler critical acclaim. Seidler's dedication to storytelling was not only a professional endeavor, but also a personal one. His own battle with throat cancer in 2005 led him back to the story of The King's Speech, a narrative that would not only win him prestigious awards, but also inspire those facing similar challenges. Survived by his spouses Marianne Theraldson, Huya Newton, and Jacqueline Feather. Seidler's death marks the end of a chapter for fans and peers who admired his courage, talent, and the depth he brought to his characters and narratives. His work remains a testament to the power of resilience and the art of transforming personal trials into universal triumphs. Sandra Crouch, a celebrated figure in gospel music known for her soul-stirring performances, songwriting, and skillful drumming, passed away on March 17th at the age of 81. Born on July 1, 1942, in Los Angeles, California, Sandra's impact on gospel music, alongside her twin brother Andre, has left an indelible mark on the genre. Crouch's musical career was distinguished by numerous accomplishments, including a Grammy Award win in 1984 for Best Soul Gospel Performance Female for her album We Sing Praises, and a Grammy nomination in 1986 for the song Completely Yes from the album We're Waiting. Her talent also extended to the secular music world, where she played the tambourine on Motown recording sessions in Los Angeles during the late 1960s to early 1970s, contributing to hits like the Jackson 5's I Want You Back and ABC. Beyond her musical talents, Sandra Crouch was deeply rooted in her faith and community. Together with her brother Andre, she co-pastored Christ Memorial Church of God in Christ in Pacoima, California, until his death in January 2015. The loss of her brother was a profound moment for Crouch, who referred to Andre as her twin brother, womb mate, and best friend. Crouch's legacy is not only found in her Grammy-recognized work, but also in her dedication to her faith and her influential role in blending gospel music with contemporary sounds. Her discography, including albums like Gospel Legacy and With All of My Heart, continues to inspire new generations of gospel artists. Sandra Crouch's passing marks the end of a remarkable journey that transcended music and touched the lives of many through her spiritual leadership and musical genius. Her contributions to gospel music and her community will be remembered as a testament to a life well-lived, filled with passion, faith, and groundbreaking achievements. Jessica Petway, a beloved beauty influencer and advocate for women's health, tragically passed away at the age of 36 from cervical cancer after a heartbreaking misdiagnosis. Petway, a beacon of light in the beauty community, shared her journey with over 225,000 followers on YouTube, where she posted around 450 videos, garnering 16 million views since joining the platform in November 2013. Her passing was confirmed by her sister Rainy Brown via Instagram expressing profound grief and the indescribable pain of loss. Petway's battle with cancer highlights a critical and urgent public health issue. The alarming rate of misdiagnoses in the United States, especially among women and racial and ethnic minorities. According to Dr. David Newman Toker of the Johns Hopkins Armstrong Institute Center for Diagnostic Excellence, Misdiagnosis rates for these groups are 20% to 30% higher than for white men. This stark reality underscores the need for diagnostic excellence and equity in healthcare. Black women in particular face disproportionate effects from conditions like fibroids and cervical cancer, diseases that Petway was incorrectly diagnosed with before discovering her true battle with cervical cancer. Her story is a poignant reminder of the disparities and challenges within our healthcare system, shedding light on the systemic issues that need to be addressed. Before her period of inactivity on social media, Petway shared a moving post on Instagram in July 2023, hoping to encourage others with her story. Despite her struggle, she remained a source of inspiration and courage, advocating for awareness and change. Jessica Petway's legacy as a beauty influencer and a vocal advocate for women's health will continue to impact and inspire. Her life underscores the importance of accurate medical diagnosis and the critical need for healthcare equity. 
As the beauty and health communities mourn her loss, her story serves as a powerful call to action to improve diagnostic practices and ensure that every individual receives the care and treatment they rightfully deserve. Kola Boyi, born Matthew Urengo, an American musician and fervent activist known for his unique blend of disco and advocacy from Oxnard, California, has died at the age of 34. His untimely passing on March 17th at his home in Oxnard has left fans and the activist community mourning a profound loss. Urango's music, celebrated for its hallucinogenic disco vibes, was not only a testament to his artistic creativity, but also a platform for his deeply held anti-capitalist views. Urango's life was a narrative of resilience and defiance. Born with spina bifida, kyphosis, scoliosis, and a club foot, he faced discrimination and challenges that would shape his music and activism. Despite these obstacles, Urango's passion for music was undeterred. He taught himself piano at a young age and participated in punk bands during his high school years. Before adopting the Cola Boy moniker, Urango played second guitar for the indie pop band Sea Lions, showcasing his diverse musical talents. In 2018, Urango released his debut EP, Black Boogie Neon, a collection of tracks that included the single Penny Girl, which earned recognition from Fader magazine. His debut album, Prosthetic Boombox, released in 2021, featured collaborations with notable artists like MGMT and received critical acclaim for its vibrant fusion of disco, funk, house, and psychedelia. Through his music, Urango sought to create a space where disabled people could enjoy themselves free from ableist stigma, a vision that was vividly brought to life in the music video for Beige 70. Urango's activism was as central to his identity as his music. He was actively involved with Todo Poder al Pueblo, a collective advocating for immigrants and workers, and APOC, through which he organized free, accessible punk rock concerts. His engagement with a radical reading group early in his career politicized him and reinforced his commitment to advocating for change through his art. The loss of Kola Boyi is not just the loss of a talented musician, but of a compassionate activist who used his platform to fight for a more inclusive and equitable world. His legacy will live on through his music, remembered for its ability to inspire, challenge, and bring joy to those who encountered it. Julie Robinson Belafonte, a dedicated activist and accomplished actress, passed away on March 9th in Los Angeles from cardiopulmonary failure at the age of 95. Julie's life was marked by her passionate involvement in the civil rights movement alongside her husband of 50 years, the legendary entertainer Harry Belafonte. Introduced by Marlon Brando in the mid-1950s, Julie and Harry's marriage was both a love story and a symbol of progress in a time when interracial marriage faced legal and societal challenges. Throughout her life, Julie was deeply committed to social justice, playing a pivotal role in the civil rights marches from Selma to Montgomery and advocating for voting rights. She championed the efforts of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, and co-founded its women's division, demonstrating her belief in the power of organized, peaceful activism. Julie's suggestion that civil rights workers lead the marches highlighted her respect for those at the forefront of the struggle. Julie's legacy extends beyond her activism. An accomplished dancer and actress, she studied under Katherine Dunham and became the first white member of Dunham's Dance Company. Her performances in films such as Lust for Life, Mambo, a Safe Place, and Buck and the Preacher, showcased her talent and versatility. As a dance instructor, she taught figures such as Brando and Alvin Ailey, contributing significantly to the arts. Julie Robinson. Belafonte's impact on civil rights, the arts, and the acceptance of interracial marriage leaves a lasting legacy. Her life's work, shared with Harry Belafonte, will continue to inspire future generations to fight for justice and equality. Julie's death marks the loss of a remarkable woman whose courage, talent, and dedication to social change have indelibly shaped the world.